this will be the first time in history where we will have a state officially protected from criticism. Will this still be a democracy? Good evening, everyone. Welcome at the Bali. My name is Yuri Albrecht, uh, director of the Bali, and it's a great, great honor to once again engage in conversation with a woman whom I greatly admire for her fearlessness and courage. Zineb El Razoui, born and raised in Morocco, studied theological sociology, among others, and fled her country uh, due to discrimination against herself as a woman and the censorship imposed on her as a journalist. Once in France, she worked, among others, as editor of the satirical magazine Charlie Hebdo, and one of the sole surviving editorial members of that uh, editorial board, um, she survived the terrorist attack of 2015. She became one of the most heavily guarded residents of France. She never stopped from speaking out passionately on the dangers of radical Islam, universal human rights, feminism, and the right to the freedom of speech. And this year she lost uh, the prestigious Simon Weil Prize, which was given to you in 2019. It was given to you of your fight against radical Islam and revoked are being outspoken on the war in Gaza. If anybody, anybody has the right to talk about freedom of speech, it's most probably my guest tonight, who made many, many sacrifices, personal sacrifices, to be able to raise your voice. So, if I may say so, give a very, very warm applause to Zineb El Razoui, please. <laughs> you don't have that many escorts as you had last time. Is that because you're more safe or is that because you decided not to? I hope I'm more safe. I hope I'm safe and I hope that everyone is safe. But uh, I, uh, I just, I was tired of that. I felt the need a few months ago to just walk alone freely uh, in the world. And uh, I also uh, did a lot of um, introspection work uh, these last uh, years, and I understood that security is something that you can find inside you. It's a feeling. It just gave me the courage to uh, start um, feeling safe without uh, security protection because it's not it's not a life you know sometimes you just need to to be free same with for instance you know when this war started for me it was extremely it took me time to speak publicly in the beginning I just wanted to stay away from uh, the horrors that we were attending since, uh, since that day, since October 7th. It took me almost a month to find the courage to come back again to the public speech in France because, you know, I was taught as a French citizen that this is the country of human rights and this is a civilized place. But I was attending for a month people explaining that kids are not the same, that victims don't have the same value, uh, that uh, uh, victims of October 7th, they were our solidarity and they were the condemnation, but the victims of October 8th, October 9th, October 10th, October 11th, 12th, 13th, till today, mm -hmm. they don't deserve this same humanity. And I couldn't believe such a thing was happening in a country like France. When I came out as a support for Palestinian people, I did it because no one was talking for them in France. And you know why no one was talking? Because people were terrified mm -hmm. to do it. And this is not normal. People were really scared for their jobs. They were scared to be called anti-Semites. They were scared to be called pro-Hamas. Because I, I have my past in Charlie Hebdo, and because I spoke out against Islamists, I recognized immediately the same hatred, the same uh, uh, oppression uh, towards freedom of speech, even though the subject is uh, different. And that led to the cancelling of uh, Simone Weil's uh, prize mm. huh? you, you were giving in 2019. They said, among other reasons, but they said that was because you retweeted something uh, which called the uh, Israeli state a Nazi state. Would you understand that people would um, 
see that as anti-Semitism? First of all, I don't know how it's happening here in the Netherlands, but I wish that in France, public debate could stop to be controlled by watching who liked who, assuming that because I liked your tweet, so I like the same music you like, and we, and I support everything yeah. you support. And mm -hmm. second aspect, would I understand if anyone is hurt? Yeah, sure, sure. You know, I'm not responsible of what people understand, first mm -hmm. of all. And second of all, being hurt is a universal uh, thing, you know? Uh, I think that anyone can be hurt from any different positions, but this is not an excuse to shut people off. Mm -hmm. uh, this is what I used to say also when I was walking in Charlie Hebdo. Some people told me, would you understand that people are hurt by Charlie Hebdo's work? I say, yes, of course. In that case, I invite them not to buy the newspaper, not to read it. <laughs> it's not compulsory to mm -hmm. read it. Mm -hmm. So uh, to come back to this uh, retweet, actually, I remember very well. It was weeks and weeks of killings, uh, of massacres in Palestine. And there is uh, this uh, Jewish man who does this tweet where he compares, yeah, where he compares the Israeli regime to the Nazi regime mm -hmm. in terms of approaches in killing. And I retweet this. So uh, this was the reason why <laughs> the Simone Weil Prize was withdrawn from me. What I understand from Simone Weil's legacy, mm -hmm. she said, never again. I understand it as never again for everyone, yeah. for all humanity. Not specifically not only, for Jewish people. Yeah, not only people. for mm -hmm. Jewish people. I personally find this is very offensive towards the victims of Shoah to mm -hmm. say uh, that their legacy is only for Jewish people. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think it was something universal. Yeah. So I responded, if this is what Sim the Simon Weil Prize means, I'm glad and proud to have that prize. But if it means to approve the crimes of the regime of Israel, I would be very happy to give it back in a garbage bag. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the mm -hmm. grandson of Simon Weil, uh, whose name is Aurélien Weil, he decided to take the prize from me, saying that it's very offensive to compare uh, the, the Nazis to the state of Israel. Mm -hmm. But this same guy, he also compares Hamas to the Nazis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, you will find the same behaviors, the same accusations from both sides, but one side is allowed to, and the other, not, the, the other side is not. So this is not acceptable for me. You could understand if course, Jews could be extremely offended by comparing them uh, to Nazis. You're saying um, there is no right not to be offended, of course. Right? That's um, the whole Charlie Hebdo legacy of, uh, points out very well, you know, there's no right to not to be offended. But would you think it's a good thing to do it? The danger is to agree on that narrative pretending that the Israeli narrative is the only one representative of Jewish people. Mm -hmm. And when there is a tweet, a person, whoever, criticizes the Israeli regime and compares it to whoever what, this, is, this doesn't mean comparing Jewish people, because mm -hmm. there are a lot of Jewish people who don't approve the Israeli narrative, who no. are not even Israeli, who didn't vote for Netanyahu and uh, Smotrich and those people who don't feel represented by them. When I worked in Charlie Hebdo, some people said, don't you find offensive to compare, uh, to say that, to compare Islam to ISIS? Mm -hmm. I say, yeah, for sure, it's not the best image of Islam. But the image is given by ISIS people, not by those who make a cartoon of the, of the whole situation. So, I think that uh, Jewish people who are sincerely concerned about their own situation, but, by also, but also by other people's situation, should be offended by the image given of them by Netanyahu and Smodrich, mm -hmm. who are killing in their name, who are committing massacres in their name. I don't think the problem is me who is tweeting about that. 
I'm, I'm not killing anyone. I'm only a person who gives an opinion. The most offensive stuff is the stuff happening in the name of Jewish people by a radical far-right Israeli government mm -hmm. who is massacring civilians since you... more than 100 days now. I've been observing dissident Jewish voices around the world who are against the state of Israel, who don't approve mm -hmm. the, the occupation and the colonization policy. Those people actually, they are being attacked extremely aggressively by pro-Israeli uh, trolls on social medias. I don't find this normal that in France, for instance, and everywhere in the West, they try to pass laws to say that criticizing Israel means being anti-Semitic. This will be the first time in history where we will have a state officially protected from criticism. What is that? I mean, is that, will this still be a democracy? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think that anyone should accept that. And Jewish people in the first place uh, are concerned by that because these are people using their religion mm -hmm. and using their name to create a whole totalitarian system where they can kill, they can ethnic cleanse, they can bomb civilians and explain to human beings oh, that we are doing the right thing, this is good, what you're killing children is good. It's for the sake of security and humanity. No, no, you know, I, I think that this is not acceptable. I mean, it's, it's obvious. Putting the Jewish people and the Israeli people together, I mean, that could be interpreted as anti-Semitism, couldn't it? It's not me who is uh, making the amalgam between Israel and Jewish people. The main problem of the state of Israel for me, it's not uh, the fact that it's a state for a majority of Jewish people. It's the fact that in the laws, it's an ethnostate. And for me, ethnostates means the negation of democracy. Before this whole war uh, started, I met a lot of Palestinian people who told me we, we lost. We, we were born in this conflict. Our parents are born in this conflict. Now we Palestinians, we just want to live. We want to have a life. We want our children to be free. So why don't they take the land, the 48, 1948 land, but why don't they give us the Israeli citizenship. We want our kids to go to the, Palest to the Israeli schools. We want our kids to go to the beautiful Israeli universities. But Israel always refused. Do you know why? Because Israel says this is a state for Jewish people and they have to be the majority. Mm -hmm. It's not me who says this. Personally, I am French. I come from a state where the, the, the national identity is not an ethno-identity. Everyone can be French if you adhere to the values of the French nation. If you want to live with others equally, you want to vote, mm -hmm. and you want to exert your freedom and respect other people's freedom. But you cannot be more French than another person because you are Catholic or white or... Uh, so this is basically the logic behind the state of Israel. It's, uh, it's uh, an ethnostate that uh, acts as if there was no uh, indigenous population in this land. And this is the, the, the root mm -hmm. cause of the problem. You have problems mm -hmm. saying this in France? These, these yes. Yeah? And, yes. And what, like we talked about the Simon Weil um, uh, Prize. Uh, in what ways? In France, many people lost their jobs mm -hmm. because they spoke out for Palestine. For me, it's shocking because I see no other explanation to that than racism. You know? Mm -hmm. I really don't see. Well, being anti-Islam is not racist, isn't it? Uh, being anti any religion mm -hmm as a religion, as an ideology, shouldn't be racist. Because no. 
religions are not a race. No. I mean, criticizing Islam normally is not racist, mm -hmm. but uh, it, this doesn't exclude that some people who criticize religions might do it because they have racist uh, feelings. And this is also for, like, for instance, France bans pro-Palestinian demonstrations because they've been repeating for years that pro-Palestinian demonstrations are anti-Semitic. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there are some pro-Palestinian people who are anti-Semitic, but yeah. this doesn't mean that standing for, for Palestine is anti-Semitic. I could make a comparison very easily. When my colleagues and Charlie Hebdo were killed by the Kwashi brothers, we received a lot, a lot of solidarity and sympathy. Uh, and I, I feel a lot of gratitude for that. But the same people couldn't have any empathy for the more than 100 Palestinian journalists who were sniped basically by the Israeli army. The same profession, the same people who said it's wrong to kill journalists, which is true, it's always wrong to kill journalists. So I saw that as a Charlie Hebdo, we were supported by this part of uh, the Western societies, but don't they also, the, the Gazan journalists deserve this solidarity and they didn't get it. So why is a part of the Western societies is not just able to see Palestinians as humans? And what would be your answer to why? Till now, everyone believed the lie that, oh, Israel is a democracy and the other side are dangerous terrorists. Mm -hmm. So Israel is doing what's necessary. Today, we understand that Israel is at least at least as terrorist as Hamas, if not more, because in terms of numbers, they kill much more. But the, the origin of the problem is not Hamas being evil. It's not uh, Israel being evil. It's, it's occupation. It's that there is a theft of land. There is a situation of uh, imprisonment of a whole population. There is a situation of stealing the homes, stealing the lands, colonization in the West Bank. And such a situation can only give ugly, violent uh, uh, events. Uh, it, it, nothing beautiful is going to grow mm -hmm. in there because the, the root that's, cause that's, has to be addressed. That's the root cause is occupation. Everyone would say in the beginning of the war, oh, Israel, they have the right to defend themselves. No, they don't have the right to defend themselves. Yeah, the international law is clear. There is nothing for an occupier such the right to defend themselves. You would say that Israel has yeah. no right to defend itself? No. People who are under occupation by the international mm -hmm. law have the right to resist by the means they have, including so, so would you say inc including Israel, military means. That the state of Israel should be waiting to get a, ne a ne next attack, or how do you see that? The state of Israel should abide by international law if they don't want any resistance. So when France occupied Algeria for 130 years, when the Algerians started their war of liberation in 54, of course the French called them terrorists. And of course the Algerian resistance killed uglily and killed some people who were French citizens and who were nice people and who didn't deserve to die. Like the, like the citizens of the kibbutzim <laughs> were killed? Like the children, basically, mm -hmm. from both sides. Mm -hmm. Who can agree with killing a civilian? But when you have a situation of occupation, it can only generate violence. It cannot ge there, there can be no peace without justice. Here this is an illusion. Mm -hmm. Are you uh, concerned that this radicalization we talked earlier about is going to make it more and more impossible to speak out? So uh, people start to understand the um, amount of uh, pressure and the size of the um, illusion that we all participated in. So. 
I understood personally that the problem of Palestine is a problem of language. We all have a Gaza inside us. What do you mean by that? I mean that we all have inside us a, a part where we agreed, in fact, to what's happening here, because we agreed to not call things by their names. Mm -hmm. There is a French writer called um, Albert Camus, <laughs> who said he has a famous sentence where he said, by not naming things by their true names, the proper names yeah. you participate the problems the in the world. The malice in the world. Yeah, this is a, yeah. So I think that we need to reestablish the language concerning Gaza. And this is why I decided to speak. This is why I decided to pay the price. No matter for me if I lose uh, a job, if actually I, I lost friends, I lost uh, networks because I spoke for Gaza. And this shows me, like, from my experience, it, it points out to a totalitarianism. And it, it shows me the way where uh, I have to speak. And I have to say, this is something not right is happening there. And invite people to speak. Because what's happening, this fear actually, is what created this horrible crime we are watching today. And I think that if we care about Israeli people, we should also tell them the truth. So they come back also from this illusion and they come back from this fear of being withdrawn and being afraid from the rest of the world. Because at the end, everyone will have to live together and the Jewish people will have to live with the rest of humanity and the Palestinians will also have to live with the rest of humanity. This is the only solution. I know some people don't agree with me on that, but for me, one of the biggest lies is, oh, the two-state solution, we are for peace. Like people avoided the conversation for decades by saying, Oh, well, we are for two-state solution and for peace. But what's, what's behind the two-state solution? What's behind peace? Is there justice behind? If not, so this is not a solution. So for me today, I only see one solution. It's one state for everyone. Like Palestine is big enough for everyone, for the Jews and Arabs. Mm -hmm. And I want them to be equal everywhere. I want them to be equal and free in Gaza, in Tel Aviv, in Jerusalem. And if this happens one day, I think that Jerusalem will finally become Jerusalem, you know, the Jerusalem as we dream of, the Jerusalem for everyone. The Crusaders tried it before. It didn't work to say, oh, this is my city. It's in my book. I'm going to take it. Would you uh, say that um, you're still as much in favor of free speech as you were as a um, journalist for Charlie Hebdo, or even more? Or? I am more in favor of free speech than ever. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I am against, the, I'm against all the laws that are meant to protect anyone from being offended. Mm -hmm. Because uh, so many different things can offend so many different people and making a law for each becomes dangerous. Mm -hmm. We should be allowed to say that the earth is flat. We know it's not the case. We should be allowed uh, to, um, to burn a book. Mm -hmm. It's ugly to burn a book. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. No. Really, I no, find no, that burning book is always really like it's a sinister symbol. Yeah. But uh, it shouldn't But be uh, forbidden. Because of free speech, um, we have um, a lot of people actually repeating sort of the narrative and lies put out by Moscow. Right? They could hurt, you know, our democracy or our, our, our rule of law based. It could become so far that it undermines our society or that you could... Well, when, uh, of course, this example is true and we know how much uh, Russia can use... Uh, Uh, different tools of propaganda to uh, spread certain facts. Mm -hmm. But like when Joe Biden speaks about 40 beheaded babies, this was Israeli propaganda too, and it ended up being a lie. Mm -hmm. I think that what's dangerous is when you only allow one version of the story. Mm -hmm. The West actually uh, only promotes one version of the reality, 
while complaining about uh, others not to respect freedom of speech, calling everyone anti-Semitic, for instance. These are mechanisms to ban freedom of speech. They tell you, oh, you are anti-Semitic. Mm -hmm. You are far right, you are uh, sexist, you are Islamist, you are Muslim brother, you are Hamas, you are, uh, you, you're hurting me. This is the tool used and now in every... Being, being offended. That's being yeah. offended, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there a difference, and probably there is, but between personal uh, offending somebody or using your right of free speech? How do you see that? I am just saying, pay attention. This is something, this is a matter of education, of dealing between people, but it does not have to become a matter of regulating the public speech because we need, as human beings, we need the, the space, the public space to remain free for debate, including on things that we cannot say in public. The war that is happening today is showing us what happens when we agree to using the wrong words for very long and when we agree to a lie such as Israel is a democracy and the terrorists of uh, the, the Palestinian terrorists are threatening it. Everyone today understood that this was a lie and that we need to restore the truth. You do hear the same often by Dutch people of Jewish descent, exactly the same sort of, um, and probably in France as well, which is doubly sad in a way, but that both communities feel like they might have to leave the country. I, I feel a lot of compassion for Jewish people because I think that every Jewish person in the world is, you know, feels involved in some way in what happens, you know. Uh, either they agree or they don't agree, either they identify the, uh, as Israeli or not, but I think it, there is something that deeply touches Jewish people and their, 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 their awareness, as much as you know, it's also the same for Arab people. You know, this is a genocide committed against Arab people and the world is watching, and so for Arab people it was very hard to see how much we are hated. You know, um, so I understand that feeling, but I think that what happened during the Holocaust wasn't healed properly. Like, I don't find it's normal in the world of today that Jewish people still live with the fear. It means that something wasn't healed. If we fully heal the Holocaust wound, if there is full forgiveness and full reliance and c confidence from the Jewish people in the rest of the planet that they will be okay, that they will be fine, that nothing is going to touch them again, that this madness of uh, genociding anyone will never happen again. People will finally maybe relax and just drop the walls and drop the security and just live together. I think that Jewish people are still deeply traumatized. And if you are coming with a whole state project that is built on the trauma, on the fear, you can only uh, contaminate all the surrounding with that fear. This fear needs to be addressed. I think that Jewish people should be safe and feel safe everywhere in the world and they shouldn't need, they shouldn't believe in this lie that actually by locking themselves in a state in the middle of people who are not friendly to them, and I understand those people and not being friendly to such a project, I mean such a project will never work. The only solution is true brother, is to brotherhood between people and it's just humanizing the others and understanding, you know, the Israeli people should only understand that the horrible suffering they have had does not give them more rights uh, on this land than anyone else and than the indigenous people particularly. Zina Belrazoui, thank you for coming here. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank, thank you, you for, for listening uh, to me. It's obvious that free speech is not for the faint-hearted. Uh, it's... Uh, important thing, it's a difficult thing, 
and thank you very much for being here, uh, for talking to me. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>